and turn to the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. We're going to camp on Genesis 18 and verse 14. Circumstances. And you can't look at your circumstances. Amen. 
You can't even look at appearances. You've got to trust God and take Him at His word. That's the only way. It's the only way you can please Him. You've got to trust God's word. And Abraham was complaining to God that he hadn't fulfilled his promise. He said, I don't have a child as yet. So God called him or summoned him to come outside of his tent and told him to look up into the heaven and count the stars. If you can count them, count them. And his mental computer broke down. And God promised, so shall your seed be this numerous. He didn't have a child as yet, but he had promised. The reason why God was waiting so long to fulfill the promise to Abraham and Sarah is because Isaac in the Bible, in the Old Testament, is a type of Christ. His birth had to be supernatural and miraculous even as the birth of Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ was born and some said the devil that Mary was running around. That's a lie. Amen. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary yes. and she conceived and brought forth a child. That's why Jesus said, which of you convinces me of sin? There was no sin. He never sinned. Never. Never sinned. So Isaac had to be born in a miraculous and in a supernatural way. Not natural. So God waited and God waited and God waited till they were old, the Bible said, and well stricken in age. Past child's age. Past child's age. And then God said, you're ready now. I'm going to show you how I can work a miracle. Amen. And church, God is a miracle yes. working God. Yes. Take it from this preacher. God is a miracle work in God. We will see it as we go along. So we find here that when the time came, and if you just write this scripture down, Genesis, the 17th chapter, and verse, verses 16 and 17. My first lesson, and I wrestled as to whether I should say this. Two things may seem the same without being the same. Two things may seem the same without being the same. Because in Genesis, the 17th chapter, verses 16 and 17, Abraham is around 99 years old. God came to him and told him, this boy, this miracle child is about to be born. I want you to notice his response. He didn't look at his situation like a lot of us. Because if you're looking at your situation, you're down, you're out. It's all over for you. You got to take God at His word. Your problem is not too great that God can't solve if you trust Him. So in Genesis, the 17th chapter, God announced to Abraham that this miracle child was about to be born. I want you to notice his response. He laughed with joy. 
I mean, it blew him away, but he believed. And he fell down on his face, laughing with joy, because he believed that with God, all things are possible. And they are. If you can believe. You see, faith is the gateway into the miracles of God. Amen. That's why Jesus said over there in the book of Mark, if thou canst believe, all things are possible Amen. to him that believe. So when God announced that this child, this miracle child was about to be born, Abraham loved with joy. But in Genesis the 18th chapter in the text. Now I want you to get this. We have a theophany here. The Lord came down from heaven himself. Read the whole 18th chapter. The whole, he didn't send an angel. He brought two angels. Read the whole 18th chapter. The Lord came down from heaven himself along with two angels. And he made his way to the house of where Abraham was dwelling with his wife. And told them the child, the miracle child, was going to be born in some time in a year. Notice Sarah's response. She lied. Just like Abraham. But it was unbelievable. She believed her problem was too difficult for God to solve. Can you imagine that? Try to get that in your head. He came to where they were living, the Lord. They fed him. They sat under the tree and they killed a cat. It took about perhaps three hours to kill this cat. And then they made this announcement that Sarah was going to have a child. And she loved in unbelief. Two things may seem the same. And they're not always the same. That's enough of the background. Let me get to the lessons now. There are three. There's, there's a second lesson here I, I want to start with. God will fulfill his promise. Even if he has to work a miracle. God, if he makes a promise, you can count on it. You can take it to the bank. And he will fulfill his promise. To this woman. I want you to write down verses 18 and 10 and make sure you underline it because that's a miracle verse. He said, I will certainly come back in about a year's time. That was a promise. And Sarah is going to have this miracle child. When Sarah loved, the Lord was displeased. What was the miracle? Now you all put on your seatbelts, because some of you are not going to believe this, but it's in the Bible. I'm going to show it to you. He turned the clock back on Sarah. Her gray hair began to turn black. He smoothed out all the wrinkles in her face. I'm going to prove it to you. Her stoop showed that she was old and decrepit. But she straightened up because God brought about a transformation in her life. She was so beautiful. He turned the clock back maybe 35 or 40 or 50 years. She was so beautiful. Until I want you to read chapter 20 and
and you make sure you read it. Because they went down into Gerar. And Abimelech, this black king, saw her. This beautiful young woman. And fell in love with her. Yes. It's in the Bible. Yes. It's in this Bible. Of all the hundreds and hundreds of attractive young women in his kingdom, he was struck with Sarah's beauty. Why? Because God had worked a miracle in her life because God is a miracle working God. And he'll work a miracle if he has to, if you trust him. Your problem is not too big for God. If he makes a promise, he's going to keep it. Chapter 20, stay there. 